Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at my top 10 platformers on the Nintendo Switch. I'm not looking at Metroidvanias here or run and gun like experiences, so think the likes of The Messenger, Ori, Hollow Knight, Mega Man or even Cuphead. I'm looking at more traditional titles that for the most part could sit alongside Mario and they can be 2D or 3D as well, it didn't matter, they are all going in. I've also done my best here to choose just one from each franchise except for one exception, so without luck it subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, it's just a fantastic port, they dialed things back, resolution, textures, lighting, cutscenes, all to give us though a locked 30 frames per second and for me that absolutely paid off, especially when you factor in we can of course play this on the go. This game it struggled on the base PS4 and Xbox with variable frame rates so I'm definitely a fan of what they went for here instead. Ultra challenging though, 3D platforming with great controls and then they added in new power-ups meaning it never loses sight you know, of its roots but feels very much like the next step forward for the series. Even the story, simple but good fun as Neo Cortex and Entropy, they're back, this time causing mayhem over the multiverse and you and Coco are out to save the day. It even has multiple playable characters that each feel unique. Super Meat Boy then, this one was, I've got to say, borderline, should I include it in this list or not, but it's near exclusively platforming, no run and gun or backtracking, so it earned its spot, but it's also by far the most removed from the likes of, you know, Mario. It's built for one thing, to punish us as players, and the slightest of mistakes will nearly always cost us our lives, and yeah, it's addictive as you just try, try, and try again. The game just throws all sorts of death traps your way on the story, you're out to save Bandage Girl from an evil fetus in a jar, and yeah, it's weird from the second it starts, and I absolutely love it for it. It's a game I've been playing now for years, and I've never got bored of it pretty much once. This one though, it's definitely for an older audience, so expect to hear just a whole lot of blood as your cube of meat explodes near constantly, and it's also easily better than the Auto Runner sequel. Rayman Legends Definitive Edition then is another incredible 2D platformer. It started its life on the Wii U, it got a re-release and it was more than deserved. It's just got a ton of content as you work your way through 100 plus levels. I think my favourite part of this one though is actually the local co-op play. It's just a blast to share with your friends. It even features a few PvP modes to compete in. The story though, you find a mystical tent, it's filled with these different paintings, different settings and you get suckered into one. Now you must not only overcome the land that that one pictures, but figure out the mystery behind it and move from one to one. The visuals then finally just stunning with Rayman and Gang's trademark kind of animations, but these worlds, almost like this watercolour style, kind of embracing almost its surreal edge as well. It even has rhythm game sections and it's on sale frequently and normally for an absolute steal. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is another Wii U release that deserves its second chance in the spotlight. I went into this one thinking they may have, you know, softened the difficulty because as a series it is known for being notoriously challenging. Happy to say though they did not, but they have been smart, giving you ways to either make it more difficult for yourself like timed runs, but then you can also make it easier as well with a mode that's called Funky Mode here. You get extra hearts and new moves thanks to a whole like new character. It just kind of makes the world a little less treacherous. The story though is light stuff, you're out to stop arctic invaders that have basically frozen your world, but it all leads to a nice spin on the formula and some fantastic enemy and boss design. I'm a big fan of this one personally and I really hope it leads to a sequel because I feel like as a name Donkey Kong, you know as far as Nintendo IPs go, it doesn't quite get the love it deserves from them. Sonic as a name is nearly always, now for me at least, something that leads to disappointment. Just for every good game we seem to get, which are kind of few and far between nowadays, it's maybe four or five bad ones following it. Thankfully, not only was Sonic Mania a return to the series roots, but one of the best Sonic games I've ever played. This clearly wasn't just a let's pump another Sonic game out, but a true passion project from a small team that very much feels though like it was made by fans for fans. 
It's a absolute tribute to the series. It not only introduces new content, but gives spins on classic zones for you to face off against. And then it's throwing in things like new buses, you know, um, new classic moments, and even multiplayer with a co-op option or competitive, which is a lot more entertaining and actually addictive than I expected. It looks good though, it feels really good, and this is kind of peak Sonic that everyone should be checking out. You will absolutely not be disappointed. Super Mario Maker 2 now may be a little lower on this list than many would place it, but I find myself in kind of a love-hate relationship with this one recently. Fantastic game with near endless possibilities thanks to its, you know, online community. But I find there's kind of a fine line here between incredible work and then just all-out troll levels. Troll levels though seemingly becoming more and more popular, which means the jump between kind of difficulty levels here, I'm definitely not a pro at this in this game, you know, it can be very aggressive. The single player though, it is a fun story, which I really didn't expect. You're basically, you know, rebuilding the kingdom. And then the inclusion of Link and all sorts of power-ups, it really is a good time. But I think honestly, I'm kind of a little disappointed with this one to hear they will no longer be updating it. You know, not updating it with new content and it just seems like a total miss of an opportunity for me. There's so much they could do. They've just gone ahead though and thrown in the towel a little bit too early. Super Mario Odyssey then is for sure lower on this list than it will be for many and I adored this game, let me put that out there, but my personal preference it leans more into the world of 2D platforming over 3D which is no doubt apparent from the majority of this list. There's no question though this will be a generation defining game for the console and understandably so, the creativity on offer is huge, the worlds they have tons of secrets and this is really Nintendo doing what Nintendo do best, you know just maximising the hardware unlike anyone else out there. The gameplay then, and it's putting a big focus on the collect-a-fun idea as you go from location to location and basically collect these moons, all while Cappy is at your side. Cappy is one of the best sidekicks the series has had in a long time. Cappy allows you to basically overtake your enemies and control them. Story-wise then, it is Mario to so go save, you know, Princess Peach, and it's just a love letter to every way the 3D classics of the Mario name should be. It even has two player, one player controls Mario, the other Cappy, and that's actually a lot more fun than it may sound. Ukulele and the Impossible Lair then is a game I absolutely rave about, easily outdoing the original 3D adventure. They went here with a 3D overworld design but 2D levels, it for sure pays off. This is from the team behind Donkey Kong and that's just immediately apparent. And this game is just incredible across the board, the visuals, the music, the abilities, the controls, all of it, there's very, very little for me to complain about. What makes this unique though is there's no set path to the Impossible Lair, that is the final level, but should you choose to, you can jump into it immediately. Expect though punishing difficulty. If you want to see what that's like, there's a great episode of The Completionist trying to overcome it and I'll link that down below. I loved its design though, I loved the 3D overworld where you kind of work on puzzles and this is a platform series I hope to see a lot more from but this is what I want to do more 2D because it is some of the best in recent memory. Celeste is coming in then at number two, a very difficult decision to make honestly, but I think it's fair to call this one a masterpiece of game design and storytelling. Ultra challenging platformer, kind of in the vein of Super Meat Boy, your job here is to get Madeline to the top of Celeste Mountain, and that difficulty it ramps quickly, but the payoff absolutely worth it. 700 screens of platforming though, an adult storyline of self-discovery and personal struggle, and it's just an example of how a genre can morph into almost something so much more than you know general expectations may like lead you to believe. It's won a fair few awards in its time and it is absolutely deserved and then once you're done there's even more brutal levels to face known as B-side chapters. A stunning game from beginning to end and it's hard to put down. This is an absolute must buy for anyone that has a switch in their hands. So Level Ahead then is my personal number one. I reviewed this on the channel, which are all linked below, as I did cover a few of the games in today's video. But one thing I regret in that video, I said it's no Mario Maker or Donkey Kong. It is good still, and I gave it an 8 out of 10, and it has its issues. That's not a lie, like it's over convoluted screens at times and menus. Some of the animations for enemy structures like turrets are a little weak. That all said though, I've now spent a whole lot more time with this than Mario Maker. So why is that? I find just the levels more exciting and challenging in a fair way. There's less kind of troll levels here. The power-ups are incredible and then the animation and the pace of this world is just absolutely spot on. 
the challenge here just overall feels a little more skill based and I always feel like something is within my grasp. It's actually made by a very small passionate team as well, a team of just five in fact. That's seriously impressive stuff when you factor in it does more than a lot of games out there. There's four player local as well, cross platform, cross save, cross play and finding like the package and getting it to the goal is an absolute pleasure. That's your aim on every single level. If I could go back to this review now I would go back and give it a 9 out of 10 because I had no idea. I'd still be playing it to this day. Topping it all off then as well, look it's a third of the price of its AAA counterparts in Mario Maker 2 and that is an absolute steal for a game that does pretty much all the same things. Honourable mentions then and for me this is more I couldn't quite figure out if they did fit into this list directly but the end is nice, another masterpiece. A little more unusual in its kind of world design and movement though and then Shovel Knight which almost to me feels like its own kind of different thing as a multi-game spanning series that honestly again is another masterpiece, an absolute must play in fact and I suggest both of them strongly. If you don't know about them go maybe check out some reviews. What would you add or take away from this list though let me know in the comments down below. With that then a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner helps more than you know so thank you all so much. If you do want to check that out for yourself I have linked it in the video description down below. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.